he sneaking us back in the house, back in the house, back in the house on my desi, messy, messy desktop. Okay. Now, in school, we use Scratch for block coding to do stuff with Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2, and Key Stage 3 at some stage. Doesn't matter if you're in the United Kingdom, Europe, or the States, Canada, etc., you'll know what I'm talking about. Now, in Linux, this was a bit of a problem because there was no native client, okay? You had to be internet connected for this to work. Aha! Not anymore! Now we have Scratux, okay? It's a basically Scratch 3, but an Electron app. Yes, I know some of you don't like Electron apps, blah, blah, blah. But at least we've got it so we can have it natively on Linux, so to speak, okay? Right, for you, those of you who don't know anything about Scratch, it's just block coding for kids. And it's how we start them in Key Stage 1 at around about six years old, and off we go. Oh, actually five. They're really good. So there's our cat. His name's Scratch, of course, because he scratches a lot. And what does it do? Well, I'll give you a quick run through. So we've got these blocks here. So I'll go to the first one. Motion. We have move steps. Turn how many degrees. Yeah. So it also teaches a lot of maths here. And problem solving is the main one. The go to glide to a position, you know, etc. Point in a direction, point towards. I'll go to looks. I'm not going to go completely through it for you. Under looks, it says say hello. Okay, that means there'll be a speech bubble. So if I said, I'll bring this over, then we go back to events and go to when clicked. In theory, the cat should say hello, like it did there. Yeah, super in it. So we drag that back. You don't want to know anything about this, really, do you? I'm just going to go through some of it with you before I show you some other stuff. Under sound, you can play sounds like meow. There's a big sound library, so if I go to meow, there's one there. Or you can record your own. Or we can go to sounds and actually go to the sound library. There's lots of sounds here that you probably can't hear because I'm using a simple screen recorder. But there's lots there. Okay, so we go back. And then we go back to code. So, under events, this is one of the main sections. So, when you first click the green flag, that's when the program starts. Or, as in this one here, when you hit on the space bar, that's when it does stuff. Okay? Uh, when the backdrop switches to another thing. These are things you go on in the code as we go on. We go down to control. So, I'll scroll down for you. So, have wait one second. A repeat loop. A forever loop. And if and then, and if then else, and a wait until, and repeat until, <gasps> and stop. Blah, blah, blah. Then sensing. When your sprite, we call these sprites, guys. Yeah, scratch is a sprite. And so when he was touching, say, a certain color, he does something else. We'll go down to operators. More maths. We like maths, don't we? And as we go through teaching scratch to kids, this is great. And this is why I like Scratux, okay? I first found it in Zorin. And it wasn't called Scratux, and it was called something else, okay? But now it's Scratux, and you can download it. It's great. And this means we can use more Linux computers in the classroom, and it'd be great. Oh, can't wait. Variables. You all know what variables are. I don't have to tell you. They're my blocks. You make your own code blocks, basically. Yeah. Like the online version, we also go down here to the left-hand button, extension. And we can have music, pen. So if I want to do this, you want to draw your sprites. Has a draw selection. I'll go back. If you've got micro bits, which I've been using on a lot the past six weeks, you can add your micro bit stuff. But you have to do it again. Okay. We'll get rid of that. But it will be there. Okay. I've just not got a micro bit connected at the moment, if you know what I mean. But in theory, everything should work. Okay. In theory. I've not actually tried it with micro bits yet. That's what I'm going to do start on Tuesday with my year two, three, and fours. That's going to be a laugh, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Also under these extensions, you can have video sensing, or you make uh, video camera alarms and stuff, text to speak, speech even, and tr translate into any other language you want to. And makey makey, if you're not makey makey, it's, oh, you know what I'm talking about. Makey makey is like simple coding. And what should we call it? Hmm, productive coding, we're going to call it. Yeah, productive, productive. Basically physical computing for little guys, okay? So anyway, we've had to all them up. And Here's our little icon here. I'm going to do a really, really quick little program. So I don't want Scratch in there. I don't want this cat in there. I want to find a new one. I've got a bat. So I'm going to choose my bat. And there he is. And I'm going to get rid of the cat. Now on a white background, that's not very good, is it? Okay. So we're going to choose a background. 
what should we have? Let's find something really nice. It's really nice to have it as a native app, to be honest with you. Re it, no, it really is. Uh, ooh, it's, ooh, Space City 2. That looks good. So my bat's in Space City 2. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to get him to flap his wings for you. Okay? So we go to Events. We just drag over the wing clicked. Okay. Now, if we go to Costumes, we have bat A, bat B, bat C, and bat D. So there's four little costumes there to make him look as like, like he's flying, basically. If I go back to code and go back to looks, if we go down here to our switch costumes, that's bat A. I'm going to duplicate that a couple of times. And again, leave it there, and again. Okay. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the costume itself. So bat A is going to stay bat A. Bat A is going to be bat B. That's going to be bat C. And that's going to be back D. Now I'm going to do something here, and you might not like it. Okay. So I've got to control the, the weight section. So I'm going to drag weight in here, weight in here, and weight in here. Yep, you got me. Now I really want to put in a loop, a forever loop. Yeah. I want it to flap forever, don't I? So there we go. Now, after every one second, the bat is going to flap. Okay, let's go. There we go. <laughs> and he's flapping really slowly and Sneaky Girl's got a cough again. Okay, That's not really fast enough, is it? So what we do here, we change all these. We go 0 0.5. I think you can duplicate this, but I'm not going to bother today just because I'm, this is what I'm not going to do. 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And I also need one up the top, won't I? Think about it. Otherwise, it's going to go to one costume straight away. So that needs also, also sorry, needs to go to zero and point five. Right. So now we're going to do it again. Ready? We click on here, and that's a bit better. So if I change that weight section to something else, it'd flap really, really quickly, wouldn't it? Now, kids love doing this, especially when they're six, seven, and eight. So this is the basics we get them to do. So what I'm going to do? Make sure the program's not running. I'm going to do it in full screen for you. So that's our full screen we look at. I'm going to click it. And there goes our bat. Flying around and flapping his wings. And going to sleep at the end. I probably could have done away with that one. Maybe. But yeah, Scratchux. I'm really, really pleased it's in Linux now. So we can get some of these older machines on and have this sort of stuff. It's fantastic. Oh yeah. I'll get rid of that now. Anyway. That's all I really want to show you tonight. Sneaky Linux out. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.